Hello and welcome to this solo review of Almatza Pilsner Beer. It's been years since I did a solo review. I did a duo review with my friend David over there at his place. Uh, this is Almatza. See if I can get the glare off of it. Well, I'm going to do a screen share and you'll be able to see a better picture. Almatza Beer, 4.2% alcohol. Introduced in 1933. All right. Nice smoke. Now they give the ingredients down here on the, let's look at the beer first. Nice head of foam, golden, straw, bubble, bubbly. All right. Hundred and fifty eight calories. A loose bottle, twenty five centiliters. Uh twenty four bottles in a case, a six pack. That's what I bought, the six pack. That exact configuration there. It was eleven ninety nine, kind of expensive. They do have cans, thirty three centiliters. Three hundred three hundred and thirty milliliters. Uh Oh, wait, not that one. That's small. These, this is what I bought. The six pack of the uh, 330s, 11.2 ounce, if you want to go by the American standard. There's the bottle. Get a better picture of the bottle. There's the 50, 500 milliliter bottle. I wish I could have gotten that. Flashback to the year 1933 when Almazza was born through the effort of five friends who thought to create this iconic beverage. Fast forward to today and it remains Lebanon's leading beer, a testament to an un entrepreneurial spirit and a champion of Lebanese everywhere. Now they also make the light, which we don't get, the special dark. Let's see what else they say. The light, clear bottle, not green. Water, malted barley, maize, hops. Mm. This is the one that's interesting to me. Now, this one here has, uh, it's an adjunct, so it's more like Peroni than, a, say, a Heineken or a Golden Pheasant. or gross, which don't have the adjuncts, or a true Pilsner like Pilsner Urkel. Same ABV as Urkel, though, right? Isn't, or is Urkel 4.4? But I'm out to dark, 11.2 ounce bottle, special dark, I'm sorry. Water, malt, and barley, and hops. See, no corn, no rice, all malt. German purity law, Almatza. The Radler. Okay, now they also have some other brands, which this one came out a few years ago. It's called Al Reyes Pilsner. It's got the Lebanese flag, 4.5% alcohol, nice. 500 milliliter can, 330 milliliter bottle, the six pack. I'll ask when I go to international market if they can get it. These water, multi barley, maize, hops. It might be like their economy brand, I'm thinking. 173 calories. Whoa. Mm. That's all they make, Al Reyes. It's just probably like Almaz is their uh, flagship, and Al Reyes is like their. Uh, Kind of like uh, Budweiser and Bush. Now I'm I'm saying that I don't know that. I'm just assuming it. Now Almanza has that diamond on the cap, and then there's 
their malt liquor, Rex. Meet the muscle man of beers. Rex is perfectly crafted, strong beer that holds no punches. When you hear that in the United States, strong beer, they can't use that term. When it comes to full flavor, and the name is no coincidence considering Rex is the Latin word for king. 8% alcohol. Get your 500 milliliter tall boy. Can you imagine drinking that? Or drinking two of them? Water, malted barley, maize, sugar, and hops. So they're adding sugar to give it more uh, something for the uh, yeast to uh, eat, consume, and convert to alcohol. And the maize. 272 calories, yeah. For 100 milliliters. Okay. High calorie beer. So they have a malt liquor, malt liquor, always malt liquor in Lebanon. But they don't use the term malt liquor because they don't have those laws, restrictive laws where you can't say strong beer. So they just call it what it is, strong beer. Heineken. They also offer Heineken in Lebanon. And we know about that. Cans and bottles. Heineken, 0%. Saul from Mexico. Beer of Moretti from Italy, 4.6. Beautiful beer. I need. I wanted to get some from my friend David and I to review, but they were sold out after Christmas, and his store was, that store was wiped out. Uh, Martin Wanzo. This has a nice hot bitterness. I don't know what the IBUs on this beer of, beer of Moretti. This uh, Amanza is, but I'm thinking it must be around 25 or 26. Then they have a link to the Vera, Vera Murray website. And then there's something called Mutzig. 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 Let's go back to 1810 France. That would have been during the, the age of Napoleon, Emperor Napoleon I, when Mutzig was born and named after a little commune at the entrance of the Bruche River Valley, Bruche. It went through some tough times, but found rebirth with Heineken, all, allowing it to continue serving up its distinctive full body taste to all. But when you like to try Mutzig, you can get it in a loose can, uh, 500 milliliter, 5% um, alcohol beer. Water, malted barley, hops, and malt extract. Okay, so. One hundred sixty-one calories. Okay, so it's um, German purity law beer, Mutzig. That must be on the uh, German border. There's a lot of French areas that were, let's say, seized from Germany. Uh, craft and variety. Let's see what they call craft and variety. Afligam, nice product. Six point seven. I haven't had it in so many years. Lagunitas. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, they get it in Lebanon. How do you like that? And Mort Subit. Don't let the name Sudden Death scare you. It's a creek. 4%. Okay, so uh, let's see it. And then I'll go back to the regular screen. The brewing process. It says uh, the bre beer brewing process may seem complicated, but it, in reality, it can be broken down into six simple steps. Let's get to it, shall we? For an interactive experience, read the following with an almaza in hand and a bowl of nuts is optional. <laughs> Milling. Grains are sent to the mill where they get crushed into grist. They expose the starch for brewing and can be converted to sugar. Okay. Malta barley. Other ingredients can be used to achieve a specific beer characteristic. So, number two, mashing and laudering. It's a nice website, isn't it? Boiling, clearing, and cooling. Yeah, sure. Hot 
tops. Fermentation. <laughs> Temperature is strictly controlled to ensure consistent quality beer. Filtration. The final step of brewing is filtration. In the filter, remaining particles from raw materials that make beer hazy are removed to get a crystal clear, bright beer ready to be packed in bottles, cans, or kegs. Now, our New England IPA fans would say, no, no, you're ruining the beer. It's supposed to be hazy. <laughs> but I don't agree. Packaging. Well, you know how they package products. Okay. Now, let's go to our story. Nice crisp flavor, mostly dry finish. <sighs> dynamite product. A little expensive for us, but dynamite. First brewery in Lebanon producing La Ziza. Grand Brasserie du Levant. The, the great, well, it really means the big, Levant Brewery in the Levantine states. The Levant is Syria and Lebanon. Galad, Galad, first brewery producing Lazio. Okay, that's 1931. 1933, Brasserie Franco Libano Syrien. In English, what? French, Lebanese, and Syrian brewery. Joint stock venture between Laziza and Almazza. Galad and Jabra. 1960, Brasserie in Malta Re Almazza. De Gelad, Jabra, and Amstel. Brasserie bought technical support from Amstel, and Amstel bought shares in Brasserie. So you see, now you got foreign interests starting to get their, their finger in it. 1968, Heineken acquired Amstel. There's a woman working in the office. That's when Lebanon was still a nice country before the bad outbreak. 1975, Brasserie Amaltari Amatza. Lebanese war damaged both breweries and Bakhti introduced Heineken to Lebanon. So they had the civil war and they're trying to make beer with rockets going off and uh, bombs being set off. If you remember that 15 year civil war. End of the war. During this period, Brasserie never stopped production thanks to its law employees and owners injected $10 million for upgrading and restoring the facilities and equipment. You see all the damage. They're still brewing and they got bomb holes. Changed the name. La Brasserie Almazza. 95, 25 years ago. La Ziza stopped due to performance. So they stopped with the Laziza beer. Wasn't selling, in other words. That's a nice shot of Almaz in the background. That's the Almaz brewery. Okay. La Brasserie Almaz Jabra. Grandson of Galad and reintroduced Laziza. Brasserie bought it fully. Okay, so they brought Laziza back. Brasserie acquired ISO 9001 certification. Okay, that's a um, technical thing. We don't need to go into ISO. Sporting to 15 countries. There's that same woman who was working in the office in 1968. Same pose. Huh? Amazing. Heineken acquired major shares of the brasserie. In other words, the brewery. Oh, I see. So they slowly came under Heineken's thumb. Laziza moved to non-alcoholic. And, okay, so Laziza became an, an N.A. beer. There's the modern Almazza brewery in the background, and they introduced Rex, the malt liquor, or as they would call it, the strong beer. Introduced Almazza pure malt. Now, you see, we don't get the pure malt, and they're not even showing it on their website. That's all malt. How about that? Where is it? I want it. Almazza light. No, I don't want that. Oh, that's nice stills. Look at that. 
Reyes. I guess that's their uh, economy brand. I'm assuming that. I don't know that. And then two years ago, Brasserie Almazza. Look at it now. Big old multicolored thing in the middle of Beirut. There's Beirut, people. McDonald's, Almazza Brewery, all the apartments and businesses. <clears throat> They introduced Saul, Mudzig, Bira, Moretti, and Craft and Variety Segment, Lagunese, Africa, and Mortsubit. Okay, so that's very interesting. To me, you might not believe it or think it's interesting. I would like to see some of these frequently asked questions, though. They might indicate if I can buy these here in America. What is the optimum temperature to drink a beer at? ending the sentence with a preposition like I do sometimes. It's not correct English, but they're Arab. And I'm American. I should have no excuse. Is it safe to drink when I'm pregnant? Oh, boy. How long can I store my beer? What is the difference between craft beer and other beers? What are lagers and pilsners? How old is a matzah? Can I tour the brewery? We don't provide tour brewery tours. Heck, I'm not going to Lebanon anytime soon. They've kept the general bottle design, but they've updated it. Is a matzah only available in Lebanon? So 25 countries. Okay, so that's enough of that. Oh, let's see the comments here. I'm going to get off the air. The air, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you can't pick up me up on antenna. I can get a six pack for $9.99 in my area. That's great. $2 cheaper than me. Uh, it's, it's not too light. It's this close to light beer, but it's got much more body than a light beer. Much more flavor. Much more bitterness, hoppy bitterness. Never had it. Lebanon. I bought it about 20 years ago, and I loved it. Ding Tao. Oh, Jing Tao. Yeah, Chinese brews. Yeah, Jing Tao is good. And the uh, Lucky Buddha. 8% bloody potent stuff. You said it. Well, they were, remember now, the calories I was telling you was per 100 milliliters calories per 100 milliliters okay i had this norwegian beer that was really fresh it was called arctic never had that norwegian beer been wanting to try some chinese brew it isn't very light in abv i've seen some at 2.5 woof that's almost not even beer delirium 14 percent. oh delirium i don't think it's that strong but you're talking about delirium and then Delirium Nocturnum, Delirium Noel. Yeah, I've had Delirium. Tremens, Delirium Tremens, DTs, the hands are shaking. Huh, I need my alcohol. Yeah, great beer. Ching Tao is a Chinese beer. Yeah, I've had it many times. Yeah, uh, most Chinese restaurants around here serve Ching Tao. Pliny the Elder. Oh, yeah. What a great beer. I had it one time in my life. One of the best beers I ever had. If you ask me what's one of the... What's the best IPA I ever had? Uh, that might be there. Yeah, that might be one of them. Might be the best. Okay. Closest relative taste in more known beers. I would say Pilsner. Uh, what is closest in taste to Almanza? Um, Yes. Um, Peroni, but this one is a little more bitter. Enjoying a new split screen reaction format. Oh, right. You should not drink a pregnant. That's right. Hey there, Ron. Hey, Ronnie. They make a huge load of brands. Right. I think the biggest Russian brewery is called Sarmat. I don't know. Uh, you got to watch how much you drink, Sayo. Oh, yeah. Old Rasputin is so good. Let's see. I can't go through. A free AK-47 with each tour. Yeah. Cheers, Ryan. Join the new split screen reaction format. <laughs> oh, yeah. We already read it. Is this beer hard to get? 
Um, yeah. I only know of one store that sells it these days, and that's International Market in Metairie. Well, they sell a lot of international beers and liquor, like uh, Flying Horse Lager, Maharaja from India. Um, might be English brewed, though, under contract. Um, Taj Mahal from India. Um, the Lebanese beer. Tusker from uh, Kenya and East Africa. So they have a variety of uh, beers from around the world. Now, of course, you're going to pay because, you know, you got to pay the shipping and all. So it, and they tend to be a little high with some things. So, yeah, you're going to pay. But international market is a fascinating place to go. I love to go about once a month. I don't go that often, but I love going. Fuller's IPA. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. Yep, Pink Elephant. That's right. Delirium beer is 6.5 in the UK. Huh, it's much stronger in America. Peroni, not a bad Italian. No way. It's a great one. Beautiful product. Well, that's enough of this. So, um, what I recommend to Almazza, highly recommend it. I don't know. I would guess it's not worth $11.99 a six pack. That's obviously too high. But I figure, well, once every 20 years, I can afford it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be running out and buying this all the time. And Lebanon is probably $6.99 a six-pack. You know what I mean? It's $7 a six-pack in Lebanon, I bet you. Oscar Blues is coming out with a king cake beer. Oh, my goodness. That's what we need, right? Abita launched their uh, 2020... Uh, Mardi Gras beer this week. Mardi Gras Bach. Because Carnival starts Sunday night, 12th night. So Carnival's coming in to play. Christmas season will end Sunday night. And Mardi Gras will start. Okay, so we're closing it out. If anybody wants to see any of the exciting liquors I've got coming up, let me know. Or I'm going to close this out. I do have some exciting beers that I could show you. But you say, oh, I don't want to see all that. I can understand. I never watch videos that people make like that when they say, look at my package that I got. And they show they make a 20 minute video showing what they received in the mail. I never watch that. I don't. I don't care. I mean, I was, I'm sorry, that sounds hard hearted, but it would be like somebody saying, here's a list of all the movies I went to see this past year. I mean, I wouldn't want to see that. Uh, but I do have some exciting liquors coming up. Wine, yes, very excited about the wine and extremely excited about the beer. Let me tell you, I have so many exciting beers, it's craziness. I noticed that beer cost more in Russia than vodka for the same amount of fluid for real. Well, that sounds about right because vodka is so common in Russia. No, I never tried making my own beer. I'm so busy buying it and drinking it, I never have time to make it. Way easier to make a good wine. I'm going to leave the beer up to the experts. I'm not disparaging that. If I know some people love to do home brews. And I've been to Jefferson Parish and had home brews from like Norm Bourgeois. Well, they did a great job. I heard bad things about home brews, but they made some home brews that were wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, so last call. If you want to see the liquors coming up, if not, I'm going to close it out and uh, we'll go on about our business. So um, tomorrow morning, I do plan to do a Dawn Busters and you might laugh and I wouldn't. Oh, wait, no, that's later. No, I'm going to do um, the Northern Lights Canadian Blended Whiskey. Really dynamite product for the price point. I think it's a great product, especially when it's $10 a bottle. And I'm going to go against um, Black Velvet Reserve, which to me is not that good. It's about $15 a bottle. It's aged eight years, but I'm not seeing much benefit from that eight-year aging. I really do not. 
The Northern Lights has no age statement, but you know it's three years minimum Canadian allowance. But it has a lot of interesting characteristics. It's very, it, it just has a lot of character. It's very enjoyable that uh, Northern Lights, the Northern Lights. Then uh, Sunday, I'll do the Northern Lights. This is the plan, at least, God willing. Sunday, the Northern Lights versus uh, Canadian Club, small batch, 12-year aged. Well, there's no hope for the Northern Lights against the Canadian Club, 12-year age. That can't happen. It will never compete. But it's going to be interesting still. I'll enjoy drinking the two. Show the liquor, says Shane. Okay, Shane, I'll show it. Cracking another Pliny the Elder bottled on December 21st. Golly. I swear that's one of the best beers I've ever had. And I don't joke about stuff like that. I'm a Scotch man myself. I think a whiskey needs some broad and fulfilling character. Well, I think the Northern Lights has a broad and filling character. Hold on. Yes, I'm going to put the Northern Lights into competition against uh, Canadian Club and uh, Canadian Limited and uh, um, I just looked at it. I can't remember. <laughs> the Northern Lights. See? And it's got the leaf and it makes it look like the Northern Lights when you turn the bottle. Like the leaf changes. You get green and different colors. It's in a brown bottle. It's, it smells so good, you know. It's like ah, it has a rich aroma. Okay, uh, so um, Okay, so uh, for scotch, I have Grant's. I bought this yesterday, established in 1887. This is a big bottle, Grant's. Still family owned. William Grant family owns it. This is a big bottle. 1,750 milliliters. It was only $26.99. Canadian whiskey coming up. Well, hmm. other scotch. I have John Barr. Now, this is a regular size bottle, John Barr. I got this for $15.99. That's much cheaper than normal. Usually about, set at the lowest, $17.99 up to $20.99. John Barr. Okay, so how is it going to taste? I don't know. Good, I hope. Canadian blended whiskey. The next one is James Fox. You say that looks like an old time label. It is because it came out in 1975 and they had never changed the label. Canadian whiskey. I guess they were into earth tones. You know, in 19 in the 70s, they were into earth tones like brown for the dirt. And maybe sand here, the orange and gold. James Fox, or an actual person, but not a well-known person. And this is a liter, a, a 1,000 1, milliliters. It was only um, about, it's either 10.99 or eight. It was very cheap, 10.99, some ridiculously low price. And uh, I couldn't pass it up. Uh, yes, I've heard good things about Grants, too. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Grants. Now, that's the base model Grants. That's the introductory level, the most famous one, their flagship. They make some really expensive Grants, things that might cost $100 a bottle. 
but this is, you know, not that. Okay, um, American blended whiskey. This is coming up soon, you know, in 2020. The 70s was like yellow, green, white, and brown. Right, right. That's exactly right. I like that color scheme. But here's another one. This is Kentucky Bow. Kentucky blended whiskey. I bought this in Mississippi. It was $6.49 for the bottle. Just a $7.50 milliliter. It's got horseshoes and some strange looking medals that I'm sure they never won. And uh, gosh, I couldn't tell you what it's going to be like. There is a Kentucky Bow straight bourbon whiskey. Kentucky Bow straight bourbon. And in English, that means Kentucky boyfriend, okay? <laughs> that would be Kentucky boyfriend or male lover for a woman, you know, we're not into, you know, aberration, if you get my truth. But um, uh, it's been around since the 1950s, and there is a straight bourbon from Kentucky Bow, and it's black label. If you see the black label, that's straight. If you see the green, that's the blended. And I think there is perhaps a bottled and bond, which might be a, 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 a white label. I've had their triangular bottles. Yeah, the uh, they had the triangular bottle at, at Mathern's, but it was cheaper per ounce if you bought the big bottle. Okay, so the triangular bottle was $15.99. But if you bought the big bottle, it, it would convert back to only $11.99. So I was like, well, why would I pay $15.99 when I can get over twice as much, over twice the amount of scotch whiskey and it converts to $11.99 for a standard bottle? So I was just going to go with the value, you know. Uh, well, I got to get off of this. Okay, American whiskey can taste really nice, but they don't really sting the way it proclaims 40 percent can feel like 15 or 20 well it depends what you're drinking of course a lot of scotch moved to america and can canada i suppose they took their craft to the new lands oh i mean the scottish people that's right a lot of the people in kentucky that started whiskey production were scotch irish dr james crow perfect example Moved to Kentucky and he started the uh, sour mash bourbon whiskey. He was an immigrant from Scotland. Uh, but of course, he's in America, so he used American ingredients. He didn't have peat, peat fires, so he used corn, corn whiskey. And he developed the James Crow uh, whiskey, which I have a little bit of that left. Uh, let's see. I have a few others to show you coming up. Um, I got to go reorganize these on the shelf. In almost every, you're right. The bigger bottle is almost always the better deal. Exactly. Here's Johnny Walker Red Label. The world's most popular whiskey. True story. Outsells Jack Daniels, Jim Beam. Even Crown Royal. Red Label. Johnny Walker. You say, well, ain't that popular where I live? That's not that popular in Louisiana, but in India, Israel, probably Lebanon, China, Japan. Oh, it's the sales are beyond your any imagination you could have. Now, this one here is very expensive. I won't be purchasing it anytime soon again. I gotta get it out. Up the bag. It's in a container. Oh. If I don't, I can't get it up. Well, it's the blue label, but it's in a white 
container protector. Come on out, damn you. Okay, uh, put that on the side. I can't get it up. We got the ancient, ancient age, 10 star, but it's only age six years. I don't know how they call it 10 star. Ancient, ancient age, had to buy this in Mississippi. It's about $15, straight bourbon. It's 90 proof, woof, age six years. Uh, George Dickel, Tennessee, sour mash whiskey, very rare. This is Cascade Hollow. This is a liter, a liter, a liter of straight bourbon whiskey, George Dickel, Tennessee whiskey, which is a type of bourbon. Hey, you know what? It was $8.99. Or was it even $7.99? It was some crazily low price, like $7.99 or $8.99. I'm not joking about that. That is a true story. When peeps talk about American whiskey, it's commonly Jack Daniels or Jim Bean. Yeah, but I, I fancy John Lee. I've never heard of John Lee, but I'd be interested in trying it. Exclusive bottles you keep in stock. Yeah. I have a little bit too much back stock, I'm sure you would agree. But, uh, well, oh, here we go. I want to show you this before I get off the air. This is the Johnny Walker Blue Label. It's very expensive, and I mean very expensive, hundreds of dollars. Not hundred, hundreds, plural. And you open it up, and... There's the whiskey in the container. And it's not something you buy too too often because it's so expensive. So incredibly expensive. All right. I can't wait to try it. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. Almatza, highly recommended. Y'all take care now. Have a great evening. I know. I said it to myself. Wow.